Okay, so good afternoon. We are on camera. So uh, anyway, we, we, we're gonna, today afternoon we are, I have taken this task of taking you to a sort of a guided tour to what is an area of DLSI uh, design rather DLSI CAD called analog CAD, that is, as you know, CAD is computer aided design. So analog CAD is the development, I mean, it, it constitutes the body of methods, tools, which are, which are useful in, in analog and to some extent with signal circuit design. Of course, analog circuits are pretty, I mean, vast in the sense that they they, they, have, they have they have various classes. So we will not go. For example, one of the one of, one of the major classes of analog circuits is is RF circuits. Now, since me and the other speakers who are scheduled to speak this afternoon, uh, they are not. I mean, we, we don't work in the area of RF, so we, we 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 are not going to speak on the area of RF. But we have. But many of the concepts that we discuss here are going to translate to RF. So, take it in a take it in a general sense. Uh, the kind of things that are uh, useful in any analog circuit design, RF circuit design sometimes has its own special methods and special models. So, uh, to begin with, we, we we are going to talk about CAD, right? So, it's computer aided design. So, first of all, we uh, need to understand that. Typically, uh, what I mean, how does the I mean, how are analog chips made? For that matter, this this is not a I mean, much of it will will also be useful for you, but we are talking in the context of analog. So, what happens is that uh, you let us say that you try to design I mean, you decide some company decides to bring in a new chip into the market for some reason. Either there could be a there could be a very big customer. Who, who, who comes and asks for it, that I need this specific chip and I'm going to give you a very big volume order, that could be it. Or it could be that you, you, you discover a particular kind of market segment and you will find that uh, there is a gap or, or, or that your competitor does not have something which is uh, of that and you, and you decide to beat your competitor or something like that. So, so, so that's the way it, it, it happens and then you, so you first have to you first have to decide the first stage is that based on customer requirements and market requirements you have to decide on the so called specifications of the chip what is this chip what what special thing it must be what are what is its performance right so when when i so so it so it all starts in fact uh, i have given my phone i think i got my phone right so the phone was there for some time so can you see this 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 thing? Okay. So, uh, so what, what I mean by performance analytics is that you need to first spend considerable time in actually fixing the target. What is it that you want to build? Suppose you want to build a filter. What is, what will be the bandwidth of the filter? What will be the, suppose you want to have a circuit. What, what is going to be, if it's a, if it's a switch circuit and we, we, we spend a lot of time on switch circuit. So, you, you, you need to, de you need to decide that what, suppose we, uh, we, we are going to talk a lot about, uh, regulated chips or switching regulated chips, so which, which, which produce a very, very uh, stabilized DC voltage for powering other circuits, something like digital circuits. So if you, if you want to design a, design a regulator, then what should be the input voltage, what should be the output voltage, how, how little ripple you actually aim to have, what should be its efficiency, because if this regulator is actually going to be powered from battery, then if it, if, if, if it loses too much power by itself, then this, then then the battery is going to going to drain, and you're and uh, you'll have to charge your cell phones more frequently, and you are not going to like this, right? So, so we need to spend a lot of time to actually very carefully decide on the performance of the chip that we want to design. So that generally is done by very very expert people in the company, and then you 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 come to set this performance, and then you say okay, so 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 I have to design a so then from there now you have to you have to decide the broad class of circuits that will that can that that, that will will be 
uh, and which, using which it is impossible to realize data. So you want to, so you can quickly decide that no, I have to go for a switching regulator. So I have to go for a bus converter. Now, now the now the bus converter can be of various types. So they can be voltage control, they can be current control. So so you have to decide. No, okay. So so I cannot do it with a with a with a voltage control uh, converter because there's going to be a lot of input voltage variation. There's going to be a lot of noise. So I need a current control converter. So you go through a configuration. Basic what type of circuit you are going to make? What type of circuit? That you have to decide. Okay. And then once you have decided that. Then you you know what such a circuit is made of, so you go for you you design the circuit model. So today's technology, it it basic. It typically people people have a lot of experience, so people know that if you want to design a bus converter, what are the circuit blocks you need, and people have also designed many bus converters in the past. So people often try often what they do is they actually start from a start from an old design and then start changing the old design. They they actually today's technology they typically go. Uh, without a lot of uh, other exercises, they or they often go into the go into the transistor design and they try to tweak the transistor and see whether they can re realize this uh, this kind of thing. So then, actually, what happens is that you you go through a lot of loops. Right? So you design. After you design, you you need to how do you see whether there is whether, whether the performance is 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 okay. So you need to simulate. You you have already used simulation tools here during this course and many many years ago. So you simulate, and then, and then you find that that some things are not okay. So you so you do a design debug, and then you, then sometimes you also need to understand that. So you actually keep on executing a loop, module by module. That is, simulate. I mean, change design, simulate, check error, make changes, again simulate. This goes on, right? Now there is, you 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 also must have many of you have actually gone through this cycle. So you didn't find much problem with it. You, you, you have a, you have a, you have you have a nice cadence tool in which you can you can easily set up simulations and you can see what is the problem. So the problem is that when you when you are designing a single op amp, it's okay, it works because you have few things to change and it doesn't take too much time to simulate. But when you when this circuit starts blowing up, so if you take a switching regulator, it's going to have Many many op amp size circuit. Then if you have a if, if you ha if you have a cell phone power system, chip, then then that's going to have many of these converters. It's going to have many of these converters because simply because various kinds of analog circuit takes various kinds of power supply. The uh, power supply required for a digital uh, circuit is is not the same as the power supply required for the display. So you need many of these switching converters even for even for powering the circuit. Of the switching converters, you need other kinds of uh, linear converters like LDO. So it's a whole lot of circuit. Now, when you start designing such big circuit, then the problem comes up. The problem comes up because you cannot, you cannot, you cannot simulate this circuit so easily. For, for we we have we have done it, and uh, uh, Srikanth will show some uh, some results that for for doing a one millisecond simulation, you may require ten hours. So I mean, can you believe oh, what the problem is? That you you make a small change in your circuit, and you want to know what that whether that change is good. So you want to probably give some give some load disturbance, or you want to give some uh, you want to give some line disturbance and see how quickly that gets stabilized because your because your objective is to make a stabilized power. So if there is a disturbance, voltage will will little bit change, but you want to see how quickly it comes down, right? So if you want to check that, it takes hours. So it becomes a big problem, right? So what, what what I'm trying to tell you is that while simulation is at the heart of things, but as this initially even today, probably 80% of the activity of 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 analog design, at least of power converters worldwide, goes through simulation, normal transistor level simulation. But today designers are just groaning because it's it's becoming a problem. I mean I mean you don't. You, you cannot simulate enough. So first of all, you are actually discouraged to simulate. If you are discouraged to simulate, then 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 you are not going to you are not going to really check whether your design is design is optimal. You are going to settle for something which works because you can't design so many simulate so many things. 
If you don't simulate so many times, sometimes what can happen is that once you keep goes to the market, we, we actually discover the error. They are very, very costly in this case. So what I am trying to say here is that the trust of analog CAD technology today, while it is centered, it was centered around simulation five years back, today's technology is actually trying to surpass simulation in, in many ways. And here we have a research group, I mean, we, uh, myself and some other faculty and along with us, we, we, we try to solve, solve some of those problems and, and, and we are going to try to give you a glimpse of what, what we, I mean, how we try to, try to surpass this problem. So anyway, if, we, if, if, if you want to understand this, uh, this cycle, then, then after, you know, after you have more or less designed the, designed the circuit and it works in the, using the KTEM tool, then you have to do a design a layout. Now, after you have designed the layout, remember that certain things can change. Like, like for example, we will we we, we we can show you. We do a project where we find that you know some some of these power converters take a lot of time. There there is a there are you have to you have to have very big transistors. I mean transistors with like uh, W by L of uh, one hundred thousand. Now, 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 obviously, you cannot make one monolithic transistor with a with a with a with a W by L of 100,000. That's not possible in the in the in the fabricated technology. So, so what you do is you actually make make take a W by L of 10, and you connect 10,000 of them in parallel. Now, when you connect 10,000 of them of them in parallel, first of all, you are going to you are going to draw lines to them. You have to you have, you have, you have to make a network, right? I mean, that's called a power array. So these now, now, now these network lines actually eat. I mean, everything has resistance, so it all adds up to the RDS on of the transistor. When the trans when, when that when that super MOSFET will be conceptually they, that super MOSFET is going to be on, then all this resistance through which the current is going to be supplied will will actually show up as RDS on. So if you did not know the RDS on previously while you were doing your KTM tool design, you you actually didn't do layout. You actually, in your tool, you gave W by L of 100,000, right? So the tool gave you a wrong RDS on value. When you actually lay it out, you, you want a different resistance. So your so your so your efficiency calculation goes haywire, right? It would have been really useful if during your design you roughly knew how how you are going to lay it out, and then there there would be a tool to actually calculate that. That if you had laid laid out a hundred thousand W by L transistor, what would have been the RDS on? If you knew that, then you could have taken care of it before you found the bad CAD drawing, right? So this is what analog CAD does. Can we do that? And in fact, we have we have results today. I mean, some of the results we saw yesterday now. That that's rather dramatic. That 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 if you use a standard tool called Acura, then you can be even 20% off in your in your in your calculation of RDS on if you if you use a, if you have such a big transistor. But we have methods today where we can be 3% off. Right? So before the transit circuit is designed, you can actually know what is going to be the real RDS on and you can actually know what is going to be the on power loss because that's going to be I square R within the transistor. And so, so, so this is what analog CAD does, right? So, so without going much into it, I'm, I'm still in my first slide, and, and I've spent so much time. So, you could you could use this CAD technology in 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 various other phases of the company, like like for example, you could use it you could use it for test plan generation. Test is today another big bottleneck of chip design. Because every chip has to be tested, there are there are there are millions of chips. Testers are extremely costly, and so test time is very precious, right? So 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 the question is that can you can you today people are asking people are asking whether you can today today typically in the industry test begins after the after the chip is made. So so why is that? That's because people do, people are not going to test it before the before the design is over, right? I mean, what's the point? So that's why. And then then after the chip is designed, there is everybody wants to go to the market very quickly. In in, in today's electronic market, you can lose billions of dollars if you are if you are six months delayed because somebody is going to come up with a better technology. So you are always racing. 
so 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 we have we have a project where we are trying to show that 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 using you know modeling technology you can you can actually you can actually generate very accurate models of circuits even before they are actually designed at the computational level and you can you can start the test plan generation process much earlier and you can you, you will get that much time and and so the the test engineer is not actually sandwiched between the design engineer and the uh, application engineer so similar so so <coughs> so this is the role of cad the role of cad is to provide with tools and methods which can help you design better analog products faster correct with at one shot making 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 less amount of mistakes right so this is what we are so we'll see some of that okay good so let's quickly uh, we will we'll skip this part okay so so as i said uh, so as i said that simulation is at the heart of design right because design is essentially i don't know whether you have done have done any uh, you know design course here like in our uh, if you are in the electrical engineering department in third year we have a such course on electronic engineering design so you will realize that that design as compared to what we have called like you know tutorial problems you have always solved tutorial problems where there are certain data given and there is a unique answer and you have to arrive at that answer this is the kind of problem solving that you have mostly done so far but design is a slightly different exercise in which there could be multiple answers so you and, and there are some answers which are which are actually better than others there are good answers and bad answers and like you have to achieve a certain level and then it's up to you how, how well you can do so so design is is essentially an iterative and uh, optimization exercise within certain constraints it's always that so so and then manually if you try to do then it's always i mean simulation is going to be at the heart of it you are going to make some changes based on your knowledge and then you are going to see see the see, see the impact of that change on efficiency on bandwidth etc so that will come to simulation and you do various kinds of simulations like udc analysis so like if you want to uh, if you want to understand efficiency like thing you you got udc analysis you know much of the energy <coughs> picture you can get from there or you can do transient analysis if you want to find out that there is there is a load disturbance how quickly it comes back then you could do a transient analysis or if you talk about let's say let, let, let's say noise susceptibility in a circuit then you could do an you could do a dc analysis so these are the typical so all of these are actually basically some kinds of simulation okay so 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 what do you do in a simulation so in a simulation you actually you, there is a simulator something like pi so there is a simulator and 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 you and you enter 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 a circuit description and you give some input and then the simulator so then the simulator numerically finds out the response to that circuit and gives you some output in some form so so this is circuit simulator you are you are you are you are, you are familiar with it now from the courses that you have that you have run up, I mean, I want to. I, I, I am. I am showing you a very similar slide to 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 drive home one point, and that point is that simulation is is essentially achieved with models. So when you so far when you use simulation, you use the device called transistor, so it has a model. rather than rather than having a transistor <coughs> so so if you want to simulate an op so you could op amp is made of transistor so you could you could see the op amp as a network of transistors each transistor having a model and you could simulate that network or you could say if you if you suppose you are not interested in doing that Suppose you don't want to know if you if, if you simulate a if you simulate a network of transistors, you can get voltage current values at 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 all points internal to the op amp. Suppose that's not interesting to you. You don't want to. Why should you simulate so many transistors? You could say that no no no. My op amp is a is a is a is a block which has a which which has a certain open loop gain. It has a certain bandwidth. So I will just simulate it as an abstract model like your like your like your linear circuit course. 
in your linear circuit course often when you when you let us say when you calculate it, the gain of a non inverting amplifier constant did you did you use the use a use a transistor model of an op you didn't you used concept of virtual ground you you used a very high open loop gain you didn't even do anything with the bandwidth so what did you do so you actually used a very simple model of the op amp although the op amp is going to be made use using transistors you didn't do it so what i'm trying to say is that simulation also this is this is this is the crux of the of the of the thing that i of the point that we are going to make here that when you are the much of the problems of the present analog cat technology comes from the fact that all simulations are most simulations are done at using transistors and that quickly blows out and goes unmanageable what we are going to say is that you can you can simulate things at multiple levels of detail as you want so building so simulating the right kind of model is very is crucial to analog cat and 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 you can get dramatic results you can get 50x simulation speed up as we will show uh, as we will show three times with 2% accuracy drop out hardly maybe 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 1% so 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 your simulations are going to be nearly as accurate but with a 50 times speed up these things are possible right so 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 so, so, so when you have models what are models models are nothing but in any in every model there are a set of quantities some voltage is current and there are some equations which define how those volt voltage currents are actually related to each other so you have certain equations and when you simulate you actually solve those equations so actually what you do is so if you are given for example in pipe you are given a metric so you are given a you are given basically a graph and the elements of that graph its models are known some of them are resistance some of them are inductance some of them are control current state some of them are transistor so their models are pre staged and what so 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 what essentially uh, let me uh, uh, so so okay so so we are uh, that's what the part about okay so 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 what i'm trying to say is i i skip the slide that what is a, i mean a model is actually a computational abstraction of a, of a device why, and 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 why is it why is it advantageous why do you abstract because there are certain parts of behavior you don't want all behavior like like for example the the the, the voltage and current variations within the op amp you don't need them so you don't need to generate them at all right but you need to be very accurately generate the output of that so that point you you, you want to generate as accurately but you don't want to generate internal points and so you can generate you can have different set of equations which will still describe the output accurately but will not generate anything internal and will simulate very very fast this is possible right so so <coughs> so when we are saying modeling we are, what we want to do is we want to create an abstraction which is accurate in a sense so suppose when you are doing ac simulation for example what is the sense sense is that when the perturbations that you are considering are small so the ac simulation is is only valid when you are giving small variations in signals around the dc operator in that sense it is accurate if you give big 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 signals and if you do an ac simulation then your ac simulation results are wrong right so so it is accurate in a sense and for a subset of system behavior so you you only want behavior at certain points in the circuit you don't want to see the other behavior right so so you can you can create models which will give you that and then you can you have lots of you can get huge advantages in simulation and and optimization okay so so depending on what you are looking at we we have coined this terminology that you can model at various levels which we call which we have just termed a b c d because it's very catchy and so you can you could so this is a so you could model it as we say at an at an at an architecture level so this is actually a chip called lp391a which is actually called a called called a power management unit from uh, a, an abstract chip manufacturer and, and as i was saying that you can see there is a little chip there is a there is a uh, there is a battery charger there are several uh, linear regulators there are there there are in this chip there are no uh, there, there are no cc converters but there are other uh, chips like uh, uh, 
<coughs> NPC919, which has several buck converters and things like that. So, if you want to model this chip, this is such a big circuit, obviously it is not a good idea to monitor the transistor level. You will, you will be surprised to know that, 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 that to simulate this chip for let us say 50 milliseconds, it will probably take 2 days at the time. So, so here we are not going to be much concerned about architecture level, but just saying that you, you, it, it starts from there when you are talking about a chip. Then, uh, okay, okay, so I will click this. So then, each of these, for example, such a big chip may be made of, as I said, buck converters, battery chargers, logic controllers, and an LDO. So if we, so this is one of the blocks, right? This is a particular chip in context, which takes an input voltage, which may be varying at the input but it will produce a perfect stable DC voltage, possibly for the processor in the same time, right. So, now when you, people, we, we, have, we have done a lot of work on the, on, on designing methods, on, on, on designing tools which will help design such converters, right. So, you can, these converters are all, all you know, controlled systems. You, you, that, is, that is a subject which we will probably be doing a lot more. So in a control system, it, it's much like you know, much like driving a car that you always you want to go in a certain direction, you always take two track, and depending on whether you're going left or right, you turn your gear in two different directions. Right? So there is a, so these are all th that is called closed loop control. So 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 here also what you do is you have you, you see that this is the V out which you want to maintain. So you take you take a feedback of V out. See, see this is nothing but a resistance device, and then you feed it to an amp feed it to what is known as an error amplifier and and this is a this is this is a very stable voltage source right generally a band gap reference so if this v out falls due to some reason then immediately there will be an error generated in the amplifier and this amplifier is going to fi finally if you if you if you want to improve this voltage you will have to you will have to switch on this gate for longer time then it, i mean current will put voltage to the charger and it will do stuff. So this is how it, it works. It it, it, it keeps an output. If the output deviates higher, it means by deviates, then there's an error. And from error, you actually drive the gate of this so that the gate now 